What is good, Desert Tiger and Bush? And welcome, welcome to this week's episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast with me, your host here on the DTP. I am the Colton G. You guys are the ambush. And this week on the podcast, I am joined by Andrew Casera as we talk all about his new album, Freak on Repeat. You're going to be getting your freak on with that. We're going to give you a little bit of a description on Andrew very soon. You guys know how it goes. There's a few things we have to talk about first. Have you guys checked out ilovedtp.com yet? Recently? Have ya? Have you checked out the new hats and the new beanies that we just released? Oh yeah, that's right. You can find them on over at our store at ilovedtp.com. Not only can you do that, it's also the best place where you can support the podcast and rep the show every single place you go, in front of your friends, in front of your family, and even in front of your enemies, because screw those guys. I bet a lot of you thought I retired that line, but guess what? It ain't done yet, because haters ain't done hating, so we gonna just keep creating. Yes, because that's truly beautiful. Also, you should head on over to our YouTube page and subscribe because we've been releasing some vlog episodes soon. And next week, we're going to be releasing episode 6, which is going to be a Frequently Asked Questions episode. All right. Let's rock and roll with Andrew Casera. Andrew Casera is a Canadian-born pop rock recording artist from Ottawa, Ontario. Teaming with the team at SGM Group Artists, Andrew has been developing his talents with great devotion and an unwavering work ethic. Since 2013, he has consistently released new music while performing live both domestically and internationally. He is establishing an ever-growing worldwide fan base after touring through places like South Korea, Sweden, Singapore, and Japan. Andrew released a compilation of his early work entitled The Big Bang in 2018, showcasing where he started as he began to move into a different style of music, one that he felt was more true to the heart. That transition has now culminated in the release of Andrew's first full-length debut album, Freak on Repeat, a funk-driven ride that will leave you wanting to come back for more, feeling exhilarated all over again. Now it's time to finally share this full embracement of the new sound with his fans and followers worldwide, while helping to lift their spirits with undeniable dance floor grooves. Andrew Casera joins the DTP today to discuss being signed to his record label at a young age, finding the bravery and comfort to sing, and all about his new album, Freak on Repeat. And we're going to be playing one of the singles off of that album for you guys right now. Now, it's an absolute friggin' jam, and I know that you guys are gonna be busting a groove to it. This is Bad Bad.
DTP fam, we are here with Andrew Casera and his brand new debut full-length album, Freak on Repeat, dropped today. It is funkadelic. It is a jam. It is groovy. It's going to get you off your feet, moving around, and getting down. How are you today, Andrew Casera? I'm doing amazing. How are you? I am fantastic. A lot better now that I'm talking to uh, you yourself. (laughs) No worries. No worries. All right. So, of course, we're going to get to talking about this new album, Freak on Repeat, some of the singles that have came off of that. But I want to get into a little bit of your background in music before that. I see in my research that you began releasing music in 2013 and that also seems to be the time that you ended up being discovered by your label so exactly what led you to the decision to begin releasing music online and how did your label discover you well when i was i think like i think like 16 years old um i was making like covers of my favorite songs on youtube and that kind of thing you know the the typical uh you know, a uh, guy that goes on YouTube and uh, tries to get discovered story. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I actually uploaded um, some, of, some of my songs I was, I was starting to write at the time to a platform called Reverb Nation. And my, my now manager discovered me on there because uh, one of my songs ended up being on one of the local charts. And um, he took a listen and uh, ended up sending me an email, and uh, pretty much the rest is history from there. Okay, so you were 16 at the time that Steve Gardner ended up reaching out to you and approaching you. I think like 16 or 17, yeah. Oh, wow. So I, was, I was pretty young, but uh, I, was, I was ready to go. I was ready to you know, write my own music, and, um, and actually uh, I wanted to be an artist, you know. So it was it was it was great timing because I was I was so fired up to uh, to discover what kind of music that I wanted to make at the time and then such. Okay, all right. So at that point, how long had you been a singer before you actually started releasing these covers and these things up to Reverb Nation? Well, not too long. Like when I was in my teens, like my early teens, like maybe like thirteen, you know, to to like seventeen, you know, I would. I would tinker around, you know, with like um, music production software and I would always sing in my room and that kind of thing. And I was always really passionate about, about singing and, um, and music. So it was always something that was a huge part of my life. Um, you know, even since I was like four years old where I was like the biggest Backstreet Boys fan, you know, so it was, it was always in my heart. Um, so I always knew that this was probably something that I wanted to do in the end. Little that I knew at that time that I'd actually go about doing it, you know, all the way till, uh, till this very moment, you know? So I'm really proud to this day to, to see like all the, all the progress that I've done and all the, all the blood, sweat and tears and hours that I put into this. It's uh, to me, it's uh, I'm just really proud of it. 
No, fantastic. It's a really big growth. You can see it through your singles, through your compilation album that you ended up releasing. So it's 16, 17 with not a whole lot of music industry experience. How crucial was the guidance of someone like Steve Gardner? And just over the years, what are some of the things that he has helped you learn not only as a musician, but also as a human being. I think, you know, having a manager, you know, can be very, very beneficial for sure. Um, especially when they have a lot more experience than you, that, that's something that can help you open your eyes to some concepts that you, you may have not learned about before, you know. I think, I think one of the most important things that he's told me, you know, over the years is, is making me remember that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So in the end, you know, instead of chasing short-term growth, just, just look at the big picture and, and, um, and just enjoy the ride, you know, in the moment. So I think that's something that's really important that I'm, I'm starting to, to understand and I, I constantly remind myself to stick by, you know, that virtue. So that's something that he, that he taught me that uh, I really cherish. Awesome. So your compilation album, The Big Bane, a music from your years of 2013 to 2017, it really has a sort of a, like, it is a very pop, but almost like an EDM, a very synth heavy style to it. So at this point in time, being like a big Backstreet Boys fan and a big fan of like that style of pop music, was this the sort of like influence that was driving you at that time yeah like when i was when i was you know in my teens you know i i really looked up to justin bieber and you know the jonas brothers and one direction that kind of thing and i and you know back in like 2013 2012 like edm was huge like if you turn on the radio that's all you heard pretty much so it really influenced me for sure um so that's why i kind of went that route because I, I wasn't sure about what kind of music I wanted to make. You know, I just knew I loved pop music. And, you know, as, as any young artist, you know, out there, we, we probably don't know what direction we want to go to when we begin. So, you know, it was a couple of years of testing, but I'm, I'm starting to really figure out what kind of music that I want to make, what kind of music I like. And um, now I'm really ready to, you know, show a little bit more of the, uh, who I really am and what my music tastes are and and my true identity. So I'm really excited with this new project because it feels much more like me. All right. Well, let's talk about into that transition into finding what's more yourself. This new album, Freak on Repeat, it's very funky. And the funk music transition sort of began, the instrumentation transition sort of began with the singles like Victim and Fever. At what moment did you start to realize that this funk sort of sound, this uh, classic uh, Soul Train sort of vibe was something that you fit with? Well, like when we released Victim, I really loved that song. Um, I just thought it was just such a a great, like attention grabbing song. And I absolutely loved the guitars. It, it kind of reminded me of, of Maroon 5, which is a, a band that I'm, that really inspires me. Like, I, I listen to Maroon 5 almost every single day. They're one of my favorite bands ever. So they inspired me a lot to kind of get that idea in my mind. Um, since they they are heavily heavily influenced by, I, I can hear some disco and funk in some of their older, older music for sure. I think, you know, in the past year or so, when I started writing this album, um, I wanted to, you know, rediscover myself and, and, and try to figure out what, what kind of artist I want to be, what kind of music that I like. So I started listening to as many records as I could. So I listened to, you know, I listened to rap, I listened to hip hop, I listened to disco, I listened to funk, I listened to K-pop, like I listened to everything. And I, and I realized that I really liked, you know, some of these old disco and funk and these retro songs that I was listening to and I would listen to them over and over that's kind of when I dis- I discovered that I think I want to kind of infuse some of these elements that I like with, you know, some good traditional pop music and make it groovy. So 
I kind of birthed something on the record called that I call group pop, <laughs> which uh, I find is, is is really fun. You know, I think it's a, a type of music that can be enjoyed by by people of all ages. You know, can be enjoyed by you know younger generations and enjoyed by my parents. So um, I'm really excited about this new song and this new sound. Sorry, and um, who knows in the future, you know, what other direction I'll take. Yes, definitely. It can transition and reach def- different uh, elements for sure. Those people who were originally inside of that movement and those people who still connect to it and are just discovering it today. Yeah. Okay. So at what point did you start playing with a full band for your live show? Was it around the time that you started releasing singles like Victim and Fever as well? Yeah, it's around that time. I think a little bit earlier than that. Like, I've been rehearsing with my band, you know, for I think about four years now. So we've been very band-focused for a while now. I just think it makes for a much more engaging show for the type of music that I make now. So I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, bring like a full band show every time I go on stage. Mm-hmm. It definitely gives your live energy a lot more of a rock feel and a lot more like vibe almost like your guys are exploding off of stage with the way that you're always swinging your fist and everyone else is just grooving out well that's the thing is is when when you listen to the record it's a little bit more pop but when we play live, we like to you know we like to make it a little bit more heavy so it's a little bit more of a rock show but then you have you know your, your disco and your funk elements and you have you know the the pop side so it's just like it's it's just very powerful, so it's it's a show that, you know, I want to put on a show that, you know, I would want to see myself if I was in the audience, so I'm always striving to, to, to put on the best experience for the, for the audience. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, in the last couple of years, you've been hitting the road a lot, been getting a lot of miles, even heading overseas to places like Sweden, Japan, Singapore, South Korea. What has it been like breaking out into those markets and even securing distribution deals in places like South Korea with labels such as Sound Repu- ah, Republica? <laughs> it's been amazing, honestly. You know, traveling is something that I'm really passionate about. And the, the fact that I got to do it for, you know, for music just makes it so much more amazing. Um, you know, I got to learn about a lot of new cultures and I got to meet a lot of fans that live in some of these countries. You know, we don't particularly speak the same language, but, you know, we, we still had fan meet and greets, and uh, it's just an amazing experience. You know, I've, I've been in Singapore and Japan and Korea and all these different, all these cultures, they're all different. All the people, you know, they're, they're different, but they're very same mm-hmm. as well. So it's just, it's just very interesting that you get to, to – see all these different kinds of energies but at the end of the day you know everyone's going out and going to see a concert you know everyone's there for the same thing so we're, we're all very similar so it's 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 very it's very uh refreshing going to all these places and meeting all these people it's it's, it's amazing fantastic so you mentioned some of the fans i actually saw on your social media that a fan in japan had reached out to you and had asked you if she could show you some of the city. How was that experience like for you? It was super cool, actually. Yeah, she, um, it was a, a fan just sent me a message on Instagram and said, hey, I'd, I'd love to bring you around and, and show you some of my favorite places in Tokyo. And I, I happily agreed and uh we went and we did some karaoke you know we went to like one of those like private karaoke rooms you know uh just like you see in the movies we went to you know these japanese restaurants it was was so much fun i never would have like imagined like something like that would have happened but it was it was so much fun and uh i'd love to do it again you know like if if the other fans you know are are excited that i'm coming to their city you know if if they send me a message uh you know and i see it and the time is right you know i'd, I'd love to meet more fans and 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 bond and have fun you know i think that's something that's, that's really important is, is getting to know your fans and the people that make 
your career a reality and possible. So I'm 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 very thankful, and that was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, how how better to connect with your fans than to get into a karaoke booth and uh, bust out some tunes for a, a, an hour <laughs> or two, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so having played shows in places like Canada, the United States, Sweden, and Japan, South Korea, have you noticed a difference in the fan experience and how they react and how they take in a show? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that people in Japan are, are much more. How would I how would I say this? I've I've, I've seen that the the people in Japan are much more composed. I guess they're 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 very polite. They 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 like to watch, and 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 just soak in the experience. You know, whereas uh, in in Korea, you know, the people were like screaming like crazy, and there was a big old rock show. You know, and and Sweden things were a little bit more kind of like here in, in the Western world in Canada. All over the world, it's, it's a little bit more of a, of a different experience, which is super cool because when you've never played there, you don't expect it. And uh, you just go in with no expectations. And uh, most of the time, you'll be surprised, you know, which is just makes the experience so much more exciting. Yes, very exciting indeed. We're also going to get all the exciting details about Freak on repeat very soon. We're even going to be spinning another track off of that new album from Andrew Cazera very soon for you. But before we get there, we just have to go ahead and update you guys with all of the cool things happening over at Desert Tiger. I mean, you guys have already heard me mention the new hats and new toques over at ilovedtp.com. Did you guys hear me mention that they're actually going really fast and we're going to have to be ordering some more soon? And because of this whole crisis thing, orders are totally going to take probably some time. So yeah, if you want them right now, if you want those new hats, if you want those new beanies, you head on over to ilovedtp.com because it's also the best place where you can go ahead and support the show and show it off every single place that you go have you guys headed on over to our youtube channel to subscribe yet we've been releasing a desert tiger vlog recently we are five episodes deep next week i plan on releasing a frequently asked questions episode to celebrate the fact that we have now done 100 separate interviews here on the podcast so yeah, like I said, to celebrate, we're going to be releasing episode 6 of our vlog, which is going to be featuring a frequently asked questions episode, and we're going to be doing an AMA as well very soon. I know that we're going to be mixing those. Some of the AMA questions are going to make it into the FAQ episode as well, but why just do one? Why can't we do multiple? So if you guys have questions, you can send them on over to desert.tiger.podcast at gmail.com. Maybe they get played. If you want a shout out, say so. If you want to stay anonymous, you can say so as well. That's totally up to you. But if you have a question, let them fly and I will answer them as best as I can. All right, now that you guys are updated on what's going on in the world of Desert Tiger, I think it's time that we went and spun another track off of Freak on Repeat so that you guys can get down before we get back into this conversation with Andrew all about this album, all about some other things like mental health, you know, important conversations like that. But before we get there, like I said, it's time to dance to Fingertips. Kiss me high, got nine. I'm much bad, I'm much bad, but I'm sure You got that arm tied to sway me And two friends to tell me You're gonna make me work all night, right? I will be there, I will be there You were crying Treat you right, unlike those other guys I know you love it The way I do it The way the picks you But you know it You feel me in your fingertips Trust me I'll be that baby When the morning comes Turn around I promise you I won't be gone Like ooh, 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 ooh. Like ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. 
this right, fine You wear that red dress to play me That lipstick to love me Who said I'm gonna spend the night right? I know you love it The way I do it The way that makes you bite your lower lip Feel it in your fingertips Trust me I'll be a baby So when the morning comes Turn up round I promise you I won't be You've also done tours through Canada, specifically stuff like Youth X Canada, where it was connecting musicians with youth through music and story and showing them the importance of connecting th- uh, with their mental health and embracing it and reaching out about it. How important is a message like that to you, Andrew? I think that's very important. Just because of the fact that, you know, I've had first-hand experiences with mental health um, and, and doing those tours, I've learned a lot along the way. And I've, I've spoken to a lot of kids. We've performed some shows. We, we've played games. We have did these little um, kind of like story time circles where, we, where we'd sit with the kids and we'd just talk about our day, you know. So they'd enlighten me with all these nice stories of, about their days and their lives, you know, which um, I really cherish. So, yeah, and I, I, I find the stigma around mental health is, is still an issue that us as a society around the world we still deal with today. It's not quite commonly understood the same way, you know, going to uh, the doctor, you know, and having your arm broken, you know, that kind of pain, it's, it's not exactly the same way. So I, I know that... Uh, the stigma, you know, we're working on it and, and people are starting to understand more and there's becoming, you know, a lot more, there's starting to have a little bit more support for these kinds of issues around the world. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that. But for me, it's uh, it's really important and it's something that I'll keep pushing. And um, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's important for us to, to love ourselves and, and to strive to uh, achieve that. So it's always a message that... Uh, will stay close to my heart that I'll be supportive of. That's good to hear. And just to ask, you are in a good place right now? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Just like any teenager, you know, we, we have our, our little dark moments, but um, I managed to get through it, and it's because of, you know, the great people that uh, I work with that, uh, that surround me, my family and my friends, and, uh, you know, the fans as well. So I owe it to, to a lot of these people, you know, so... Just having a great support system around you is, is definitely helpful. So, but I'm I'm feeling great today, so I'm really happy about that. 
Well, I'm really, really happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so yeah. let's jump into the new album, Freak on Repeat. So it right. is your full jump into this new transition, a sound that you said you felt was more embracing of yourself. So let's get into that. Let's get into the recording process. Was it recorded cool. in one place? Did you record it in multiple locations? What was that like? Uh, it was in one place, uh, in, in one studio, which is really cool. You know, it's um, the studio that uh, my, my record label owns. So, you know, I get to spend a lot of time there. And um, I think one of the great things that, um, that came out of the album was that I had a lot of opportunity to put in my own flavor in there in terms of production. So I got to learn a lot of a lot of things when it comes to, to producing. You know, I co-produce you know every, every song on the album, and that's something I've never really done before. So I really got to learn a lot of new things, and you know, in the process, you know, a lot of the times it was just me messing around in the studio, trying to come up with new ideas, or if I already had an idea, working in tandem with my producer. A lot of the times I'd just be alone in the studio, you know, and I just play the scratch tracks that we already had and uh, I would just come up with some melodies, some lyrics, some ideas and, you know, eventually something would come out and we would just go from there. So it was, it was a lot of fun and uh, I got to work with my, with uh, my band on some of the records. So, you know, we had some, some lots of fun nights, you know, just tons of laughs and making great music. So it's definitely a, a point in my life that I'll, I'll never forget. It was uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think you can hear that on the record. It's just a it's just a great fun record. Mm-hmm. Definitely a lot of energy on this album for sure, especially in some of the singles, like the last most recent single that you dropped on March twenty seventh, "Bad Bad." Yeah. How has the reception of "Bad Bad" been like for you? You know what? It's it's been amazing. You know, it's been more than than I could have ever ask for. The fans have been so supportive. They've um, they've so far what I've, what I've seen is they really like the new kind of direction. You know, we've uh, we released a a couple singles. You know, over the past year or so that kind of have flavors of that. But uh, with this with this new record, it's going to be full on in that direction. So far, what I've heard from the fans is, is really inspiring and and i'm really excited to to let them hear the full record and uh, and then one day you know when this whole covid thing ends uh we can go and and have a good night and and play it live for them and just have a good old good old time together yes after they get it stuck in their heads during this entire time lots of time to do that so once you finally get to them they should be nice and brushed up on the material for sure exactly yeah (laughs) <laughs> so now that you mention the COVID, how exactly has this pandemic affected the release of this album? It hasn't really affected the, the release of, it, of this album itself. You know, we've been planning this for a very long time, and it, it's just a coincidence that it happens to be at the same time. But, you know, we're not letting it affecting the release or, or, or myself or my team. You know, we're going ahead with it, and uh, I think it's a, it's a crucial time for for people, you know, to, to enjoy music. Because at the end of the day, people are at home and they're not at work. A lot of, a lot of people, you know, when we're sad or we're bored, we turn to, to people to entertain us, you know. We turn to music, we turn to movies and, and that kind of thing. So I think right now is, is a great time for me to, to, to release this album so that I can, you know, keep the spirit up for people that are, are at home and also for all the uh, the support workers that are out, that are out there working, you know, to keep the spirit up for them as well, you know, to to support all the great work they're doing. So we're still going ahead with it, and, and I'm and I'm really excited. All right, fantastic. So, do you have some content in the uh, backlog that you can release during this time, or are you going to have to find ways to create content? in new different ways how are you staying connected with your fan base well i think social media is is a, is a blessing right now definitely um i'm, I'm uh, spending a lot of time communicating with them because i think it's very important in these times times of uncertainty you know 
it's uh, it's, it's great to have someone to speak to. So, you know, with with the fans, um, I've uh, I've done some some of the live streaming, but also something I did recently was I did a Zoom call with uh, with a group of fans, and we spoke personally, face to face, in a big public public uh, Zoom chat room which was really cool, you know, we got to ask each other questions and, and just talk, you know, like just like a regular conversation if it was face-to-face, which is really cool. So that, that kind of thing is, is probably what, is, what I'm, I'm focused on is just keeping, uh, keeping myself busy, you know, trying not to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. That seems to be the case with a lot of us. So I'm sure a lot of us are very thankful to artists like you who continue to release content so that we can stay entertained so that we can stay sane yeah well it's uh, it's our pleasure for sure I, these are, are, are pretty strange times you know I, we're definitely not prepared for this and a lot of people don't know what to do so you know we just live in the moment and roll with the punches and live it day by day and, and, and one day it'll be all over and uh, we'll just get back to uh doing uh, our regular thing and enjoying life no i mean there's not a whole lot more we can do otherwise i mean there's it's a pandemic we should we can stay home that's the best that we can do and those that need to work we thank them for their efforts and we hope that one day that the world can be a little calmer for their sakes yeah and and i think coming out of this there's going to be a lot of things that will change like i think live streaming will be a huge thing i think there's going to be a lot of, of new technology for the music world and the entertainment world that are going to come to life you know from this because you know when when it, when you have the uncertain times people work together and it promotes growth and a lot of people come up with new ideas so i think you know in some ways it's it's terrible what's happening out there but if you look at the positive side you know i think there'll be some great things that'll come out of this Mm -hmm. there's a lot of adapting that can be done and a lot of growth that can be done because a lot of lessons can be learned yeah 100 percent. all right fantastic so is there any plans for a new single in the near future yeah definitely i mean we're going to release uh, release a a couple new singles from this album i can't say the the title of course but, uh, you know, we're probably going to do either two or three um, and uh, release some music videos along the way and uh, probably some touring after that if the, if the restrictions uh, get taken off, you know, for, uh, for visiting other countries. Absolutely, and I hope that that happens much sooner than later. All right, before I ask my last question, Andrew... Where can the listeners of the Desert Tiger podcast find out more about you? Yeah, they can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. If you just know my name, Andrew Casera, you know, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find me anywhere just with uh, just my name. <laughs> you can, they can also check me out on Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming platforms, you know, if they want to go and listen to the album when it comes out May 1st. Mm-hmm. As they absolutely should. <laughs> All right. So, say, as someone who had a few struggles with maybe finding his voice and maybe finding comfort in finding his voice and having to go through the struggle of mental illness, say there's someone <laughs> who's home right now and maybe wants to sing, maybe wants to songwrite, but maybe doesn't have the exact confidence to go out and do it. What message do you have for that individual? I think that if I look back and, you know, when I, when I was like 13, 14, you know, and I dealt with those kinds of things and I was in that exact same position, I, I wanted to, you know, make music and that kind of thing. Um, at that time, you know, a lot of people made fun of me and I think what kept me going was just, you just have to find it within yourself to believe in yourself. Even even if it's just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit is enough to keep you going. Um, and just, you know, doing your best to surround yourself with good people that are very supportive. It's, you know, it can shine a light in your heart. So I, I definitely recommend, you know, just, just do your best to believe in yourself, work hard, you know, and do, do what makes you happy. Don't focus on other people. There's always going to be other people that, will be there to try and take the fun 
out of everything, you know. So just do what makes you happy, and um, eventually you'll just find your way. Because life, life is a crazy thing. It, you don't know where it will take you, but as long as you, you keep trying to serve your purpose and, and have fun, then uh, life is just a beautiful thing. So just keep doing you. That's it. Fantastic. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Andrew Casera. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This was was great. track that you just heard yeah that you, we just played for you it's called funkadelic in the middle of the show we played fingertips for you that was a jam too and at the beginning we kicked things off you started getting your freak on repeat to the track known as bad bad all these songs including the rest of andrew casera's brand new album freak on repeat are available right now Right now on your favorite music streaming service. Yes. Yes, it is that easy. When you're there, you should hit follow so you can stay up to date with everything going on with Andrew. And I have to go ahead and give a big old roaring Desert Tiger podcast. Thank you to Andrew Casera for joining us here once again and sharing his story. I have to give one of those roaring thank yous to Cassandra. 
and the team over at Strut Entertainment for helping hooking this up. I have to give one of those roaring thank yous to Steve Gardner for just being an awesome human being in general and for helping Andrew Casera help find his voice and help bringing it to the world. And finally, last but not least, one of those roaring Desert Tiger podcast thank yous to you, the listener of the show, for tuning in to today's episode. If you're new, maybe you want to go ahead and hit subscribe and continue finding out what Desert Tiger is all about. Maybe you want to go ahead and give us a five-star review over on iTunes or on Podchaser. It would help us out a lot. Or maybe, maybe you enjoyed today's episode enough that you want to share this on your social media or with your friends and your family. If you share it on your social media, if you went ahead and tagged either me, the Colton G, the Desert Tiger Podcast, or Andrew Casera, we would be ecstatic so that we can go ahead and show you the love you deserve for, well, showing us a little bit of love. Yes, yes, that's how the circle goes. And can you believe that we finally have hit a hundred different interviews here at Desert Tiger? Yeah, we dropped two interviews to this week, too, to celebrate that fact. Have you checked out our other interview featuring Ayla Tesler Mabe of Ludic? You should definitely go and check that out. And maybe check out the other 100 amazing interviews that we have released in the last two and a half years. It's been a crazy journey. So at whatever point in this ride you have joined along, thank you for joining the ambush and for being just diehard fans of the podcast and tuning in every single week. Next week, we're going to be coming at you with Ezra Jordan as we discuss his brand new EP, Cheap Therapy. It released in April, and we're going to be getting all the details about it. Plus, you always know we're going to get even further into that. So I'm very excited to get into my chat with Ezra Jordan with you guys next week here on the DTP. Until then, stay happy. Stay as healthy as you guys possibly can. Until I can see you, rock out with you, shake your hands, give you a big old hug. I really hope that we can do that again one day very soon. Normally I tell you guys to chase your passions, climb your mountain. That can be very difficult in a time like these. And when I tell you that, guys that, I also say that when you're doing these things, some rocks are going to fall out from underneath your feet because that is adversity. Right now, we're going through a little bit of adversity, but that's how we grow. Human beings have a wonderful ability of adapting in succeeding and surviving. And baby, we are going to grow from this even bigger and stronger, and hopefully we come out much brighter as well. All right, I will catch you guys next week. And until then, bye-bye. Hi. Hi. Hi.